air conditioning hyundai santa fe sport 2017 so this is the multi video on this and this is the re this is after the recharge now it's been running for five or ten minutes and we are looking at 40 degrees fahrenheit if it'll focus there come on focus 40 degrees fahrenheit 63 degrees fahrenheit that is this down here at the filter inside here but over here it's really hot but i don't have the fresh air dam i have recycle so we got this 40 degrees at idle outside is uh 68 degrees or 70 degrees that's the outside temperature uh oh shoot i don't got my probes on here for superheat subcooling sorry guys you missed that on this one i don't have time because i'm also doing the other one right on the other side of here you can see my probe right there and that's where i'm getting the temperature from let's look at the pressures right now and now i'm going to change this i'm going to open up this fresh air door and we're going to see something happen but let's go over here 118 on the high side 28 on the low side uh no superheat or suction because i don't have the clamps on the liquid line so you get to miss that information right now i'm sorry but uh doing five vehicles at one time and trying to get out here in the time of doing just one and a half vehicles uh, yeah that's profitable uh let's take it off and watch that temperature change boom now we're going to open up that fresh air door and you're going to see something happen here watch what happens to the air that goes over the evaporator so where, where's our temperature here's our air side what just happened okay i'm having a retarded moment oh i'm having there we go now we're taking in the air right here let me get this out of here so now we're taking in the air that flapper just opened 70 degree air is being taken in remember it was 65 let me get that way down there if you can see something doesn't feel right it almost feels like there's an air remix there or something like that so now we got 71 degrees at idle with the air being cooled because this is a little warmer here being cooled because that flap opened up 68 71 and what did it do to the low side remember were we 40 degrees before let's see we were 40 degrees and you can see right here when i open up the door air flapper the duct outlet temperature jumped up to 52 degrees then you see before I opened up the duct, the outside air temperature was 63. But as soon as I opened up that outdoor air, look at, we got 72 going in there now. And you can see the low side rose with the high side. They both went up. Let's see what happened to our uh, pressures. Let's see. Uh, now, before the clutch was cycling or the variable control, control valve was cycling the displacement of the compressor because it was reaching its minimum. Well, now there's more of a heat load coming off this exhaust manifold and this hot air. It's not really hot yet, but the hot air coming from the radiator is now being sucked down the fresh air. So we're no longer cycling because we have some heat load. Even though there's no sun heat load, we have some heat load coming from here. And now we're no longer cycling. You see that right there. Before we went up to 169, cycle off, cycle on, cycle off. Now we're, we're going pretty steady. Our low side went from 28, now it's at 38. Let's see what RPM's done, how it reacts to RPM's on this vehicle. Not all vehicles, but this vehicle. Some pressures go down when you give it RPM's. Some pressures go up. Let's see how the Santa Fe does. There's the RPM's, here's our pressures. Let me get it up around 15 to 1700 RPM's up 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 come on right about there if i could hold it right about 1700 rpms and let's watch what happens what are the reactions some variable displacement compressors do absolutely nothing under these conditions some variable displacement compressors will increase the high side decrease the low side some variable displacement compressors will do the exact opposite the high side dropped and the low side raised the manufacturer's software determine what that manufacturer's year make model vehicle how it responds 
So we're watching this over a little bit of time. Oh, I got it up there at 2,000, a little bit more. Let me take it down a little bit. Let me get it like we're cruising down 35 miles an hour down the main street somewhere. Come on, I can't get a steady foot here, guys. I'm having a cerebral palsy foot. There we go. I got it kind of steady. Come on, why can't I control it? Goddamn idle air control valve and uh, power control module are taking over and not letting me get a nice steady foot feed. I'm feeding it a little more and it kept going down. Then it overshoots. Reminds me of some of those old diesels. And you could see it in the reaction right here. And remember on some variable displacement compressors, this would never happen. It would be two straight lines with no reaction. Do not use rule of thumb. Do not use averages. Do not try to use one vehicle's temperature pressures to another. And over my hundreds and thousands of videos, I've been able to prove this over and over and over again under the same scenarios. And sometimes with the exact same vehicle in the same vi video at the same time. There we go. Okay, I got it pretty steady. You can see my, my foot's pretty steady up there. I'm just above 1700 RPMs. Let's go take a look and see what happened to the pressure, our temperature. This is pressure. So we went to uh, 27 PSI at roughly a hair over 1700 RPMs. And we're at 200 PSI on this vehicle. Remember this vehicle, not other vehicles. Don't try to compare. Let's look at our temperatures. Now we didn't come much down on temperature on this one. This manufacturer, uh, we went from idle with the fresh air, the warmer fresh air, and the warmer fresh air temperature is 80 degrees. So 80 degrees temperature air is now going over the evaporator. And it's at 49. So that's a 33, that's a 30 degree difference between the ambient air going over the evaporator and the out, uh, outlet of dash. Some vehicles are 40 degrees, 35 degrees, 30 degrees, 20 degrees, 50 degrees. Different vehicles are different. No rule of thumb. Get rid of that shit. Any old timer who told you that all vehicles do this on this day and that, go tell them to stuff it where the sun don't shine, including instructors. There's a lot of instructors do not understand how variable displacement systems and the software that's taking over under different RPM loads, under different evaporator loads, sun loads, the sun load sensors. There you have indoor humidity sensors now, you have indoor, for decades you've had indoor temperature sensors. The guys just don't understand. And they need software like this with digital gauges to teach their students, get the hell away from analog gauges. If you're an instructor and you are still using analog gauges, Go back and work on Model A's and go, go teach kids how to crank start. And why don't you go back teaching kids how to rebuild carburetors and rebuild starters? Because that's where your mindset, if you're an instructor or if you're the head of a department for a automotive training class and you are still using analog gauges in your school, I'm sorry, you need to be shut down. Don't, don't get pissed off at me. You literally need to be educated or eliminated because you're doing a dishonesty, a travesty to your students by still teaching them analog gauges. All right, see you guys.